Hi, I'm Dick Logan. I'm the golf coordinator for the Northside School District. And what we're trying to do here today is, is better acquaint golf coaches, new and old, about things that they can uh, acquire over time. It's nobody expects you to have it all at one time, but things that you can acquire over time that help you with your kids. It gives you opportunities to, to have drills and, and uh, give them all kinds of uh, ideas on how to become better golfers. That's what we're after anyway. So let me uh, start. We're just going to kind of do a little, a little tour of the items here. And camera will follow me as we go. So let's start out. First of all, I'm going to use this as a pointer. But first thing I want to tell you about this is this is what a lot of kids call an aiming stick or something like that. A lot of pros are using these out there. And you can buy them at Edwin Watts, and you can buy them at uh, Golf Galaxy and places like that, and they sell them for like $10 a piece or something. If you go to Lowe's, what this is, is it's a, it's a parking, it's a driveway marker. It's got a reflector on it, and it costs like 3 or $4 a piece if you buy it at Lowe's. So just as information, you don't have to, a lot of these things that I'm going to show you, there's a less expensive way to do some of the same things, okay? So I'm going to try to show you both. All right, one of the things that I want, want you to notice here is I've got a box full of golf balls. What, what I do is I'm a beggar. I go out to talk to, when I'm talking to groups of people, I'm always saying I've got, I need lots of golf balls for middle school golf and would you please donate? And so what they do is they donate golf balls, all different sorts, and what I do is keep a collection. I think every golf coach should do that. I think it's important because you never know when you need some golf balls. You never know when the driving range is closed. You never know when you're going to need some, some uh, equipment. So just prepare for that and, and uh, it'll help. That, by the way, is a, I think it's a 12 by 12 by 12 box and we figured out that that holds about 400 balls. Um, a 10 by 10 by 10 box we figured out holds about 200 balls. So we've got, we've got boxes of both. All right, another thing that I think is real important. I have a little toolbox here. This toolbox carries all of my training aid tools, all the, the basics that, that I think are going to help you. And I'm going to show you most of them. But one of the things I like about this box, I got it at Lowe's. It's, a, it's got two levels. One snaps on top of the other. And so it's, it's, uh, it's really helpful to store a lot of gear. Okay, And I keep the basic things that I think you should have as a golf coach in case you have any issues come up. All right, so let's, let's talk about that. All right. First of all, in this toolbox, I keep things like as simple as ball markers. I'd suggest you get some of those. Just buy a whole bunch if you can. Tees, lots of tees. Kids are always out of tees. Get as many as you can. Sharpies. One of the things that is really important for a, a new golf coach, and especially um, coaches who have teams that are playing in, in advancing events, one of the things they should do is always make sure the kids are making identifying marks on their golf balls. And that Sharpie comes in handy. Get lots of colors. And that way, um, everybody's got something different. Because if they're both playing the same ball, it's really helpful if they've got a different mark on their golf ball so that everybody knows whose is what. Okay? And also, one of the things that I wanted to mention as, I, as, as we go over training aids and, and golf coaching tools, I went to Academy and bought a bat bag. Most of you have been coaching other things. This bat bag worked out perfect. It's got all my uh, putting and chipping training aids in it. It's got target circles and, and all sorts of things in here that we use when we're practicing our putting and, and things of that sort. It, it really comes in handy. It's got, if you'll notice the bottom, it's got a zipper compartment and that's where I keep all my target circles. So. It, it's a very effective uh, tool. Get a little toolbox like I had over there and get one of these and, and uh, you should easily be able to keep everything together so you can manage it easier. All right, uh, another good thing to have. These are also available at Lowe's or Home Depot, either one. These are just the little, the little markers they use when they're marking cable lines or, or underground piping or something like that. Um, and they cost, you can buy like 25 of them for five bucks. And they're great little markers. They work if, if they're a real cheap way to get started on, on targets. Because one of the things that, that I think most coaches aren't aware of is how important targets are in teaching golf. One of the rules that most pros that I know talk about is never hit a golf ball without having something to aim at. You always have something to aim at. That way you, you always know if you're 
if you're to the right or to the left, you can start diagnosing what caused it. If you if your kids are just hitting golf balls at the driving range coaches and they're just flailing away and hitting them everywhere and don't pay any attention, they may as well not be hitting golf balls because bad practice perfects bad swings. Okay, the word practice makes perfect is kind of a misnomer. Practice, perfect practice makes perfect. Bad practice makes makes you worse. So so it's important that kids have targets. So. What I want you to notice is as, as you see all around this green, I've got all kinds of different targets that, that you can use. Okay, another thing that's always good to have is some string. Um, string and some tees, you can make what we call a putting ladder. I'm going to show you a putting ladder that we do a lot simpler, but a putting ladder can be done on the cheap. It can be done with string and tees or string and pencils and it works just as well. It just is a little more time consuming to set up, but later on when we show a putting ladder, um, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, another thing that's always good to have is some bag shags. Okay, when, when you're out chipping and putting and pitching and all that kind of stuff, kids, it's really helpful to have something to go get the golf balls. Some golf courses are going to have one of those nice little PVC pipe things where you can rake them together, but, but most don't. Most won't. So you've got to prepare yourself. Another thing I was going to suggest is, is these. These little tubes are, uh, they hold 24 balls, and those are really good too. I, I usually will carry a couple of these with me when we're going to a drill, and then maybe five or six of those. That way you've got eight or nine people picking up golf balls, and it takes that long to pick them up as opposed to, you know, taking forever to get them all out, okay? Now another thing I wanted to show you here, and this is something that is, if we can get a little close-up on that, this is called an almost golf ball. What an almost golf ball is, is it's actually something, I think Dave Pels' name is attached to it, but you can look at almostgolf.com, and what an almost golf ball does is it's just like a golf ball, it's the size of a golf ball, but you can pick it up and you can see how much lighter it is than a golf ball. But the main thing that an almost golf ball is for is, is like, let's say you're one of those coaches who has transportation issues, or uh, the golf course you got to go to is a long way off and you want to find something you can do on campus. These are perfect for that because if you get yourself a few little mats uh, for the kids to hit off of or you've got an area on the, in the field where they don't care if they hit off the turf, then use these almost golf balls. They fly 40% of the distance of a regular golf ball. So I mean, if you hit the longest tee shot you could hit, 300 yards or something like that, one of your power hitters it's going to go 120 yards and most of us have a, have a field or a playground somewhere where you can hit a 120 yard shot. Most of the time you're not going to hit uh, drivers with these anyway but the, the key point is your kids need eye-hand opportunities and if you only get to take the kids to the golf course once or twice a week it's really good to have them use something. These or the old wiffle balls are okay but I, I like these better than anything because they, they, they're durable they also come in the tubes, as you see. That's what these are. These are tubes full of almost golf balls. You can buy them just like that. They're available at Golf Galaxy. They're available at Edwin Watts. And, uh, and if you ask for school pricing, a lot of times they'll give you a really, really good deal for school. Okay? All right, we're going to look at these a little later when we talk about putting. But here are some putting devices that, that are helpful. This is what's called a putting arc. And what it does is, as a student takes, takes the putter along the putting arc, they get a feel, especially if they're, they're new to the game, they get a feel of what a putting stroke is supposed to feel like. Okay, this is a putting plane. This is made, this is, the putting arc is their own company. Putting plane is made by a company called Eyeline Golf, and it does the same kind of thing. It's a little smaller and a little more lightweight. Um, this, this is just like a target hole. One of the things that you're going to find, and I've got a couple other examples over there, um, one of the things you're going to find is a lot of golf courses like this particular putting green right here. If I had 20 players and this is my putting green, we only have three holes to putt at. So what can I do about that? Well, what I can do is create more holes. One of these is a good way to do it, or you can buy some of these things. These are what we call target holes, or if you'll notice, here's how to do it with the less expensive. This is, this is, uh, 
shelf paper, as I recall. I think this is some kind of shelf paper that I bought. And you can buy it in different colors. All you have to do is cut it in like a four inch circle. And that's that actually, it's better to have them a little smaller than a regular hole, because if, if the kids can hit it close to this, then they're going to be close to a, to a regular hole. All right, let me move on. These are, the best thing about these little target circles, that's what these are called, target circles. The best thing about these little target circles is that you can randomly just toss one out and make that the target. And all you have to do is adjust, you know, what length you want. I mean, if you want them to work on six foot putts, 10 foot putts, whatever, you can put that around a hole or you can put it around one of these and, uh, and it'll work just fine. Okay, now, Here's where you bring in your shop teacher or your art teacher. That's what I did. If you get your shop teacher and your art teacher to give you some help, they'll take a two by four and cut it into four to six inch lengths and take them to the art teacher if the shop teacher doesn't have any way to do this and have them paint numbers on them. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've even got all the way through 18. I even have a little arrow pointed on the top of them so that when I set it down, I point it at the hole that I want them to go to. And what's really helpful about this is that you can make a putting contest, you can make a chipping contest, um, whatever you're trying to do, you can create it on the fly right while you're at the, at, at the golf course or the practice screen. And uh, what's good about that is the more you can involve competition in junior golf practice of any sort, whether it's little guys or taller guys. The more you can involve competition, the better it's going to be. The more they're going to pay attention, the more they're going to focus on what they're supposed to do. And uh, it's even worthwhile to set up, occasionally set up a nine hole, three hole, six hole uh, putting contest and actually give them scorecards and have them keep score. And what what's helpful about this is you'll have some you'll have some really good players. Everybody's going to have one or two, and, and some are very lucky and get a lot of good players. But, but if you've got one or two good players, sometimes their short games aren't real good because tee to green, they're good, and their short games aren't as good. It's kind of embarrassing to them to have uh, a freshman who's not very good beat them on the putting green, but that can happen. And it's important that, that uh, you try to make that happen because anything you can do to get your better players to focus and work on their short game is going to make them better players. Okay, now let's, uh, okay, it's hard for the camera to see this at this point, but another thing that's helpful is a snap line. We'll look at it also when we do the putting aids. Uh, the snap line, the reason it's helpful is because one of the things that kids have trouble with not just kids, but adults. Beginning golfers and average golfers have trouble with is making sure that they stand there thinking their putter's online, but it's not. So what we do is we'll just take a snap line on a nice straight putt, which this isn't a straight putt, but on a nice straight putt, you take a snap line and you determine the length you want them to putt, two foot, three foot, four foot, something like that. When you're working on short putts, the shorter you start with, the better. You should always start with like two foot putts, then three foot putts, then four foot putts, because you want them to build a confidence. You want them to believe they can make any putt. And that's really important. So what this is gonna do is, if you just tell them that the, the line of their putter, the face of their putter is supposed to be perpendicular to the snap line, they can much more easily tell whether they're online or not. Okay, next thing. Okay, these are things that you see at everybody's swimming pool. These are what we call wacky noodles, and they come in different colors, they come in different sizes, but they are a very good target. You can put them out on the driving range, you can put them on the putting green, you can put them on the chipping green, and all you have to have is a broken off club shaft. A broken off shaft is all you need, and automatically you've got a target. Uh, what I suggest you get along with this is uh, make sure you got a range finder, and then what you could actually do when you're at the driving range is have a youngster walk out there with this or you walk out there and have somebody range finding on you and when you get to be 50 yards, 75 yards, 100 yards, if you're trying to have them practice certain lengths, then put these targets out where you want them and you're all set. And they're easy to take down, easy to put away, 
they're light and easy to take care of. So I just suggest that's something that, that I learned from the first tee of San Antonio. They use them all the time. And when I was down working with them one day, I just thought that's just a simple idea. And it, it really is good, inexpensive too. Cause I think you can buy these things for like two bucks a piece at Walmart. All right, one last thing, and then we'll move on, okay? This, this is what, these are all what are called target circles. They come from something called, a company called Eyeline Golf. And any of you want to get in touch with me and find out how to get a hold of Eyeline Golf, you can, but it's eyelinegolf.com. Just look them up on the line, online, and you'll have no problem finding them. Okay, these are 12-foot target circles, 6-foot target circles, three-foot target circles, and then the smaller ones that I already showed you. The reason that this is very helpful is if you're working on chipping practice, bunker practice, anything like that, if what you're trying to do on the short game is get them to learn to make most of their six-foot putts, if you can get them inside one of these circles, their scores are going to come down. And kids really like targets. That's, it's so helpful to them. They, I mean, in fact, they'll get into competition. You can have competitions and give them points for each different level. I just think these are, are, are some of the best things you can get out there. Um, there are other companies that make something similar to that. There's a website called Golf Around the World that has training aids from all, every place. Um, but I would just suggest that you get yourself something like this. You don't have to get all this stuff to start with. What I would suggest is just get what you can as you can and make use of it because it's going to make your kids better players.